I know what I think that today's consumer wants. And it's so interesting how that has changed over the years. We have a couple different architects that we like to use. And we also use a spatial planner, which is, I think, a little unusual than a lot of builders. Today, I am so excited to welcome in Chris Raglin of Homes by Chris. For more than 20 years, Homes by Chris has been an award-winning designer builder in the Kansas City area. This is a company owned and operated by Chris and Roy Raglin, who are a husband and wife team who have built more than 200 homes in the Northland area. This fantastic partnership started years ago at the University of Missouri, where Chris graduated in economics, earning an MBA from Rockhurst University and then spent 20 years in corporate project management before joining Roy in the building business. You'll find they are committed to providing what you desire in your dream home, including energy efficiency, aesthetics, functionality, and design. They hold themselves to a high standard that is well above a traditional builder's standard. And that is what truly sets them apart from any other custom or spec home you might choose to buy. Roy and Chris's homes have won over 40 awards in the last 15 years, including many from the Greater Kansas City Home Builders Association's Parade of Homes, which is where I first came across them. So, Chris, welcome. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. Yes. So, for those of us that aren't as familiar with your business, can you tell me a little bit about what you guys do? Obviously, you're a home builder. Do you target a specific size, price point, demographic, niche? What's what's kind of your MO of Homes by Chris? Well, we really like doing custom homes. We um, we build on land, so we like to do a lot of country builds. And we primarily build in the Northland area in Clay and Platte County, but we are we are going out for the right project. We actually have a teardown going on right now down on the plaza. Ooh, that'll be fun. Um, So the design is amazing. That is what really caught my eye about you guys is... I, you know, I do the parade of homes. I'm a real estate agent. So I go snoop and see what's going on every fall and spring. And your eyes start to cross after a while. Like, oh no, these are all starting to look the same to me. But (laughs) I walked in one of your models and I looked over at my girlfriend and I was like, this one was designed by a woman. And we kind of laughed. And then like months later, someone was like, oh yeah, Homesway Chris, Chris is a woman. I was like, oh, I knew it. (laughs) What is different about the design that you guys do? And like, what is it? It's just this touch in your homes that feels so different than most of the, is it because you're a woman and most of these are designed by men? What do you think it is? Oh, well, thank you. Well, I think just even from the start, when we started building, I mean, I told my husband, I go, well, you know, we're going to hire an interior designer. We're going to start off with these showcase homes. A lot of people call them speculative homes. They call them sh- showcase homes. And, you know, every, other people are going to start doing this and they're going to start, you know, copying what we're doing. And he, and Roy goes, no one's going to spend that little bit extra money to get the right design detail in there. And we did, and we have continued to do that. So all of our homes have an interior designer that we've hired, but I very much am part of that and um, make sure that you know, there, there's a fine line between uh, fashion and trend. So that is, we tried to stay on the fashionable side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So you worked in the corporate world for many years. Did you always have a, an interest and an eye for design? Or did this, was this something you had to kind of learn on the job? Uh, well, I always, um, I actually always wanted to be a home builder. My parents built a home when I was 15 years old and uh, then fast forward a few years and my husband was a new home realtor working in subdivisions, marketing new home subdivisions. And so really, you know, we became friends with builders, uh, really watched what they were doing. And then we decided we were going to take the leap and it went, it went extremely well right out of the gate. And we had a dear friend who, uh, was a builder and just sat down and, and helped us on getting the right trades and and just, you know, the do's and don'ts of building. So we had a great jump start there. Yeah, that's awesome. When you were a kid and you wanted to be a home builder, did you vocalize that to anyone? And, and what did they say? Like, <laughs> did no, that was something you wanted to do. And what did they think of a 15-year-old girl oh. wanting to do that? <laughs> no, I, you know, no, that, that was a long time ago. No, you know. 
I even like the smell of it. I like the smell of new wood. <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, they didn't think much of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, those those little nuggets of childhood dreams can play out way later in unexpected they ways. Can. What is it like working with your spouse? And what, did you guys have concerns about that going into business together? Of like, oh well, I'll, how's this gonna go? <laughs> Well, actually, how we started it is um, I started four uh, showcase homes, and Roy was my realtor. He was not the he was not in the building part. He was my realtor, and uh, you know we're like, okay, if these don't sell, we'll turn them into rentals. And we got carpet in the first house, and they all four sold within a week. Mm-hmm. So then it was like, well, I guess I'm a home builder. Mm-hmm. And um, then Roy continued for a couple of years of marketing um, the. The, our our new homes and then he then he joined the team because it just um our business plan it, it just it very much changed so then Roy became part of the the building team so how does that work for you guys do you have a problem like bringing the design conversations to the dinner table at night or are you pretty good about separating uh-huh. yeah there's a lot of times like, okay, just one more thing that I have to say about business and then we're going to stop talking <laughs> at the dinner table. But no, it, it works out really well. We really enjoy it. it it's kind of funny. Some of our, um, one of our traits one time does, don't you two ever get sick of each other? Cause you know, we're, we're together a lot, but, but actually, um, we have split up our business and that Roy takes the, the house from, I, you know, I, I'm work very hard at putting the design and everything together. Uh, together, he go we go out and we pick out the lots that we're going to build on or visiting with customer, and then he takes it from the survey all the way to the roof, and then we get all the mechanical through, and then I take it from there to finish. Okay, and that was one question I had: is I feel like your floor plans are pretty unique as well are those mm-hmm. specific to you guys and is, is that Roy's yeah. area of expertise how does that work um I I actually draw that first floor I I can I do that I'm, I mean I'm not a trained architect or anything but but I know what I like I know what I think um the today's consumer wants and it's so interesting how that has changed um over the years and then um then, you know, we, we have an arch- we have a couple different architects that we like to use. And we also use a spatial planner, which is, I think, a little unusual than a lot of builders. Is we hire a spatial planner who comes in and it's like, well, if you tweak this and tweak that and, you know, you need to make the linen closet bigger or, or you, you know, this space is too, you know, we need to shrink here or let's do something unique with the island. And so, you know, we get it, we get it pretty far and. No, we we both have a lot of input into that. That is so interesting. That's that like little extra attention to detail that I think you can feel when you walk in your homes. Mm-hmm. Do ha, have you heard of other builders taking up spatial planners too? And like, I mean, do you set a trend and then worry that oh no, everyone else is going to do this now too, or do people tend to oh. not? <laughs> it is kind of funny how um, you know over the years we were first to put in a farmhouse sink and. You know, now that's pretty common. Um, we were the first to put in slipper tubs, the freestanding tubs in a speculative home. Um, I remember when I put in the first linear fireplace and my fire, I, I had gone to the International Builder Show and our supplier, our our supplier for um, fireplaces goes, Chris, don't do that. That house will never sell if you put in a linear fireplace. And I go, well, I'm not going to put it in all of them, but I'm going to try it in one because I, you know, just it, and it's really, it's here to stay. And, and actually we're now starting to put in more of the traditional fireplaces again. So all, all the trends, they, they go back and forth and there, and there's nothing wrong and there's nothing right. I mean, it's, it's, it's personal preference of what you want in your own home. Mm-hmm. How do you stay on top of that? I feel like it, it does swing so quickly sometimes from like, oh, it's all about gray. Oh, nope. Now we're not doing oh, eyes. We're only doing browns. Like, no. how do you how do you keep up with it? I know, it is, it's not easy. I, I can remember when um, I don't know, it was a few years ago and I discovered riffs on oak and how oak is so big and coming back. And I was like, oh, will I ever sell that? You know, I, I still have I had a house that had maple cabinets in it. And I was like, oh, I'm doomed. I, but it's not. I mean, I'm still putting in maple cabinets, but 
it is um yeah a trend can swing pretty fast sometimes but you know there's 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 a lot of um great design out there that's timeless so and we, and we do do a lot of that too yeah you really do when you are doing a true custom build from start to finish with someone mm-hmm. that's you know they're involved every a buyer that's involved mm-hmm. in every step of the way have you ever had experiences where you've had to be like no i'm i'm not gonna do that that's a great idea but we're not doing that <laughs> um, we really try um to always say yes to what the client wants i mean sometimes you know, maybe there's a code violation that we can't do it, but we really to do try to give the consumer what they want. We did a house not too long ago that was themed around their college alma mater. So, <laughs> and they had some strong colors in it. So I, yeah, you know, that's, that's, um, it's definitely personal preference on building a home, but you know, you try to make it look really really good and bring all the colors together and it can be done Mm -hmm. that sounds like a a a tall task i'm sure you nailed it though (laughs) i think of it as like when i get my hair cut and i'm i always ask my girl that does my hair like do you ever have people that ask for a horrible haircut and you just have to like clench your jaw and do it and she's like yes but it's not she's like sometimes i will speak up i'm like (laughs) so it's like a balance of both like do what you want but like this is my professional advice (laughs) right (laughs) Yeah. What is your favorite part of the build job process? Like your favorite moment from, you know, picking a lot to getting to the closing table, which is your favorite thing? I think right when, after the cabinets are in and after the trim is in and we have the house all cleaned up and it's ready for paint. Mm-hmm. And I think that's when you can really see how the proportion and scale and that the house is all coming together and it feels, you know, it feels really good. And, uh, and of course, my second most favorite is when the house is totally clean and the next day the homeowners are moving in and you got, you know, everything's in place. Every light fixture is there. Every, you know, it's just, it is fun to see the finished project. We just did one that was fairly, a fairly modern home and very, very clean lined. And um, it's, it's just, they're actually moving in this Friday. It's absolutely gorgeous. Just a gorgeous house. So. That is really neat. And that brings me to a good question. Do you have a personal, like what's your personal style and do you get to do it a lot? Well, our personal style is is we're traditional. Right now, um, we do have our own project going at our house. We're putting in an outdoor kitchen. And um, even though we're very traditional, the one thing we're doing is where where the appliances are, we're doing a really thick countertop. It's gonna be like a five or six inch countertop. But then the island is going to be super skinny. So I'm excited to see how that turns out. Yeah, that'll be fun. Traditional, but we're not. <laughs> mm-hmm. The traditional with a little spice. I like it. Yeah. yeah. So do you move a lot? Like, is it hard when you just get all these new ideas and see these new floor plans? Or do you just do a lot of projects on your home? How do you kind of balance learning all this new information all the time (laughs) we actually this is our 29th year living in our own personal home everybody thinks that we move all the time but we have we live on a very small cul-de-sac and we have the most wonderful neighbors and none of us are leaving we're all remodeling and staying we we've become dear friends we go to each other one you know we go to each other's children's weddings and we we're a close-knit group so that's we're, we're very blessed that we have we have that neighborhood here and we have a great backyard and it's very private so mm-hmm. um we, no we're not we're not moving <laughs> and that is awesome that's hard it's hard to find that so that is yeah. cool. yes <clears throat> what has it like been working in the construction industry in the post covid era uh i'm a real estate agent obviously and i remember the first contract i had where the builder had written in that if the cost of lumber increases, it goes on to the buyer. And my office, everyone was like, oh, no, no, we haven't seen this yet. And now it's like, every uh, contract has that, you know? So, the escalation uh, clause, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But like, that wasn't a thing before then, really, right? So, what has it been like to adapt to this like post COVID world that we live in now? Well, for years, we have been a cost plus builder. So, our homeowners see um, every bill, they know what everything costs in their home. They want to make a change. They they know exactly what their cost is going to be. So we do cost plus, and that's a um, 
I think that's a great way to build a house. I think it's it's fair. It's fair to us and it's fair to the homeowner. Um, and it work. It just works out really nicely. But yeah, the during those times when prices were going crazy, that it was a tough one. I mean, we had some some of our showcase homes. We didn't price them till we almost had them done because we we didn't know. I mean, is there going to be a twenty percent increase on countertops? Is there you know, that everybody gave a bad rap to the lumber, but it was across the board on price increases. And what about staffing issues? I know for a lot of people, it's been really hard to find tradesmen and, um, and their subcontractors mm-hmm. are having trouble keeping their teams in place. How has mm-hmm. that been for you guys? We we actually have done really well with that. Uh, we have put together um, a great trade group. Like I said, you know, we, we've we been in business now for more than 20 years building homes and um a lot of our trades are the same that we started with on day one. Um, and once again, it, it's just we we treat them really fair. We we try to keep our scheduling straight. We do pay on a timely manner. In fact, um, we you know we pay our trades more frequently than most builders, and I think that um, also gives us some loyalty. So we we have a we have a great group, a great group of guys and gals. Yeah. What is it like being a woman working in this field? Do you, do you, do you, are you like really aware of that all the time? Like, oh, I'm the only female in this room or is this something you're just used to? Oh, uh, um, oh, uh, there's something that happens. Oh, I, almost every week there's something, it, but it's okay. I, um, I, I think I've been dealing with that, um, with my age, just starting in the corporate world, I dealt with it there. So it's never gone away. Yeah, absolutely. Like, is it okay though? Because like, I feel like in 2023, you shouldn't be having to deal with it anymore. But I know you're right. Yeah, you just have to have a positive attitude about it. But I used to be a sports reporter. And, you know, even in the last, this is, you know, all 10 years or or more recent, and I would sometimes walk in and be the only female in a room. And, and the treatment I got was different. And it's like, oh my gosh, all these women that came 30 years before me made some progress, but not nearly enough. Right. So I'm sure it's right. the same construction which he just says what it is so um you know there for instance we we have a really great uh heating and cooling company and it was a husband wife team and i will tell you jill was out in the field and she was putting in furnaces back in the day and whenever um i have an issue and i i need tech support and i i'm sitting at a house i i call jill so i don't care what anybody else says that she yeah. knows it better than anybody on how to how to troubleshoot um, the equipment out in the field. I love that. Do you think it's been a like net positive or more of a negative thing that Chris could be like people could call you and not ex- know if they're you know be expecting a male because Chris could, is a name that could go either way. Ha- have you ever thought much about that? Yeah, I, I get a lot of phone calls and they're like, "Oh, I'm so sorry, I called the wrong number." And I go, "Well, who are you wanting to talk to?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it happens. I I read once that um, Taylor Swift's parents named her Taylor specifically because that name could go either way. Oh, they were like when her okay. they were like when we want when she applies for a job to have an equal playing field with everyone else. I was like, that's so Chris also. So love that. Yeah, I think Super. though, I think though that we ha- we have an advantage in the real estate market and that we we bring a little more detail to the job and we make sure all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. And we really do try that end product is 100% right when they move in. Oh, it totally is. I'm, I can see it myself mm-hmm. for sure. So tell me, what are your hopes and dreams for the future of your business? Are you guys wanting to grow? Are you happy with where it's at? Do you have an exit plan for someday? And what, what, what else do the future holds for this business? Well, um, Actually, our son, our oldest son works for us now, and uh, it, we do have a succession plan in place. He'll probably take over the business in a little less than four years, but um, I'm actually not planning to retire at that time. When he takes over the business, I'll still have some role um, that I will do within the company, and I plan to continue to work. I, I actually have a plan of uh, 2032, so I plan to work several more years yeah well that's that's exciting though that will be a really fun new season to be able to just focus on the things that you really like instead of carrying the whole load on your shoulders but 
but we are working on it. We we really have in the last couple of years. We now build more of a higher end home, you know, a four thousand to our forty five hundred to seven thousand square foot um, custom is more in the price point that we're at now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, for anyone listening, if you haven't seen their homes. You, if there's a model open, the next parade of homes, like you have to go see them. They are gorgeous. Um, okay, Chris, one more question. I ask everyone that comes on the podcast this. What is a great meal you've had recently in Kansas City? You had a great dinner at a restaurant and you're like, oh man, everyone has to try this. Oh, so I do have a great restaurant to go to. We went Saturday. We had to go visit a, um, one of our vendors down in Grandview. And coming back, we stopped at um, Housewife Restaurant. Have you ever been there? I have not, but you're the second person I've heard say that. Oh, my gosh. I mean, we we just, it's, you know, kind of a brunchy, lunchy place. Uh-huh. And it was, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Loved it. Okay. Good to know. I'll have to make that a priority uh, yeah. for sure. Because once you hear it twice, it's like, okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Well, If people want to get in touch with you, if they want to learn more about your work, Uh where can they find you online, on social media? What's a good way to kind of see what's going on with the business? So we're at hbcbuilder.com. And uh, they also can give me a shout at 816-781-5700. And we'd be happy to sit down with the customer if they have some land to buy or if they're looking to build in one of the estates subdivisions up in the Northland, we'd be happy to meet with them. And we're now doing a few teardowns south of the river. <laughs> I cannot wait to see those. I'm excited. <laughs> okay. Well, Chris, yeah, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate well, you being here. And yeah, we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Thanks for having me. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us today. If we haven't already, let's connect. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and TikTok at Rach the Realtor KC. We're back right here every Thursday morning with a new guest on Connecting KC. See you next time.